In this tutorial, we'll show you how to take a set of pre-made toolpaths based on our vector widget and array copy them so that we can make more than one copy of the same toolpaths using different tools. And then we'll take our merged toolpaths tool and show you how to take a set of different vectors with different toolpaths that use the same tool and create an optimized toolpath that we have controlled the way that the toolpaths are being executed. For the start of this demonstration, we're going to focus on the array copy toolpaths functionality of your software. To do that, we're going to need to open up an existing file. Under your startup task, let's click Open Existing File. Navigate over to your array copy and merging toolpaths tutorial folder. And in, there, in, your, in your files folder, you'll see a vector widget toolpaths.crv file. Select that and open that up. Now we're pretty sure that you've seen this vectric widget before, but let's quickly go over how it's set up so you can better understand how the array copy toolpaths feature works. Let's first of all, let's have a look at our vector layers. And we've got five vector layers. Each one is associated with a toolpath. So this one here is our cutout toolpath, our slots, our drill holes, our text, and our crosshatch. And if we go ahead and have a look at our toolpaths tab by clicking switch to toolpath commands, you'll see that we have five toolpaths set up. And each one of these are associated with vectors on certain layers. So if we take a look at our profile cutout, double click on that. And if we have our advanced options showing, then you'll see that we have our vector selection area that we can take advantage of. If we click the vector selector, then what we've done is we've associated this toolpath with vectors that are on the cutout layer that are open vectors or closed vectors. And we want to associate this with our toolpath. So essentially this toolpath will be applied to any of these parameters on this particular level. So we can close that down and close that down. And you'll see that all of these are set up the same way. If we went into the crosshatch, we can take a look at the vector selector. And these are the parameters that are used to execute that particular toolpath on the vectors on this layer. So we can close that down and close that. Now let's have a quick look at how this would be cut previewing our toolpaths. So let's look at our preview toolpaths option and we'll just preview all of our toolpaths. So what's happening is it's going through one toolpath at a time in order, cutting the profile first, the pockets next, the drill holes, the crosshatch, and then the profile text. You'll see that the top three toolpaths use end mills and the bottom two use v-carve bits and the end mills are all the same and the v-carve bits are the same as well. So let's say that we wanted to go ahead and make a sheet of these instead of just cutting one individual one at a time. Well, to do that, what we need to do first of all is set up a larger job space for us to work in. So let's just close down our preview toolpaths. Let's flip back over to our drawing tab and have a look at our job dimensions. So we're going to change our job size to be much larger than what it is. We're going to make it 96 inches by 48 inches and all the other settings will stay the same. We'll just click OK. If we look at our 2D view, you'll see that now our vectors are in the bottom right hand corner and we have all this extra space to work with. So let's jump back over to our toolpaths tab again and have a look at our array copy toolpaths options. And that icon is located here just to the right of your create merge toolpaths and just below your recalculate all toolpaths. So if we click that, we'll have the option of starting the process of creating an array copy of our toolpaths. So right now we don't have any toolpaths visible. So let's turn them all on by clicking this checkbox. And as soon as we do that, they'll all be listed underneath our toolpaths here. And you'll see again, the first three all use a quarter inch end mill and the bottom two use the same 90 degree V bit. Now in this particular case, we want to tell the software how many rows and how many columns we want. We want to tell it how we'd like to space these out, either using an offset or a gap, and then whether or not we want to minimize the tool changes or not. So let's just go ahead and make five rows with 11 columns. Now, if we were to choose the offset method of creating our array, then we'd have to change these numbers because what it will do, it will actually offset these from the bottom left-hand corner 
and the actual part is about seven inches across. So these would actually overlap by the time they were done. So using these particular numbers, it's easier if we use the gap using one and a half on our X and one and a half on our Y, and that will put one and a half inches between each of our copies in both directions on our X and in our Y. Now for right now, we are going to not select the minimize tool changes. In this particular case, we are going to think that we want to cut one, changing our tools as often as we need to, popping that piece off while it moves on to the next part so that we can finish that first piece before the next one is done and so on and so on. So let's just go ahead and calculate that and we'll see what happens. So what we now have in our tool paths is we have a parent and all of our other tool paths are now listed under that parent. And you'll see that in our 3D view, we have now a copy of our tool paths. If we take a look at our 2D view, and we hide our tool paths, you'll see that we still have our original set of vectors and all we've done is actually copied our tool paths. So let's go back to our 3D view for a second and preview all of those tool paths. And you'll see that's gonna cut out one, it's gonna do all the work for it, and then move on to the next one, then move on to the next one, and so on and so on. And what we could do is pop this one off our CNC, we could finish it and move on to our next one and so on and so on. Now that's not the fastest way to do it, but certainly it would do the job. Let's just speed this back up again so that we can finish up here quickly. And there we go, so that's great. So now let's say we wanted to actually use the minimal amount of tool changes we could to cut this whole sheet at one time. So let's close this down. Now if we double click on our array toolpath one or our parent, we can get access to our array options again. And if we turn back on our tool paths, you'll see this is exactly what we had set up before. And now we can go ahead and click on the minimize tool changes. Now it's important to remember that either option here requires you to either have an automatic tool changer or your controller and post needs to be able to stop in between tool paths so you can go ahead and change your bit manually. So we're gonna minimize our tool changes now. So that means it's gonna go through our whole sheet and do our profile cuts, and then go back and do all of our pocket slots, go do all our drill holes, and then go ahead and do our, we're gonna do a tool change and then do our profile crosshatch and our profile text. So let's cal calculate that and let's reset our preview and let's slow this down a little bit and let's preview all our tool paths. And you'll see what's gonna happen. It's doing our profiles, our profile, our pocket slots, our drill holes, and then moving on to the next part because those all use the same tool. And then moving on to the next one and so on and so on. Let's speed that back up again. And then it goes back and does the two tool paths, does the cross hatching and then the text and then moves on to the next one and so on and so on and so on and finishes it up. So let's just click close. And now if we needed to go back and make any changes to the vectors for this, or if we needed to make a change to one of these tool paths, that's pretty easy to do as well. So let's just go back into, let's, let's show all of our tool paths again. Let's go into our profile cut. And let's just say, for instance, we wanted to actually, instead of just cutting to the edge of our material, we actually wanna cut through our material. We could change this to be 0.376, we can recalculate that. We're gonna get the warning to say that we're actually gonna cut through our material. We can click okay with that. And then we can reset our preview. And then we can preview all of our tool paths again. And that one change has been fixed for everything. In the same right, if you wanted to go back to our 2D view, you could edit any of these vectors because they're associated with the levels and the tool paths that it would automatically be updated for you and you wouldn't have to worry about changing all of the vectors for every different vectric widget. If you're happy with the way that the array copy toolpaths feature worked and you wanted to save off your toolpaths, then all you need to do is just go over and close down your preview toolpaths. Go and select your save toolpaths option. Make sure you have all of your toolpaths turned on you'll see that they'll be reflected up here. Now, again, I want to reiterate that 
In order to be able to use this option, you need to either have an automatic tool changer or a post that will allow a pause to happen between tool changes for you. In this case, we do have an automatic tool changer, so we can save out those tool paths and then load them in to our CNC. Now, if in the end you didn't want this to be grouped anymore, then all you need to do is hover over top of the parent, right click on that, go down to delete, delete this, and be presented with a little window that says, would you like to delete the sub tool paths or keep them? If you wanna keep them, just say keep, and you'll see that automatically your tool paths will be broken back out again the way they were originally. Now we're done with this file, so let's just go ahead and go file and close. And no, we, we don't wanna save the changes, but if you'd like to, you can go ahead and move on to our next part of this demonstration. In the last demonstration, we showed you how to make multiple parts using a array copy toolpath so that all the parts would be exactly the same. But what if you wanted to use one tool and cut different parts with that same tool, but wanted to do it in a fashion that was easy for you to actually manufacture in a certain way? Well, that's where our merge toolpath operations come into play. If we go over and open an existing file, and open up our drink coasters file. We'll see that we have a page set up that has eight square coasters and eight round coasters. And up here in our vector layers, we've got pockets set up on their own layer. We've got details set up on their own layer and we have profiles set up on our own layer. And we have tool paths that are associated to these particular vector layers. So if we go and take a look at our tool paths, you'll see that we have these three tool paths set up. We have one for pockets, one for the profiles, and one for the profile cutouts. Now it's important to remember that we set these up in a certain order so that they'll be cut in this particular order. We want the pockets to be cut first, the details next, and then the cutouts after that. If we go ahead and have a preview of these, you'll see that we can click the pockets and preview those. And then we can go ahead and have a look at our details. We can preview those. And then we can have a look at our cutouts and preview those. So that's the order that we'd like these coasters cut out in. And as you just saw, we couldn't actually remove this from our table until we were done cutting all, our, all of our coasters. But let's say you wanted to do them one at a time so that you could remove the coasters at a safe and appropriate time and take them and do a little bit of finishing on them and then come back and get the next one. Well, to do that, we're gonna to need to use our merge tool paths. So let's close this down. And the merge tool paths button is right next to our array copy tool paths. If we click that, at the top, we have a spot to list all of the tool paths that we want to be merged together. And we have some options here for our ordering. If we turn on all of our tool paths, we'll see that they all use the same cutter so we can have them all up in here at the same time. We don't get any warnings. We can choose the order that we like to have them cut in. So we can cut these from left to right in a grid fashion, bottom to top, or the shortest path possible. And we can also go ahead and merge these by part. So for this demonstration, we're just going to show you the left to right. Now you might want to look at these other ones and choose the one that is safe and appropriate for your job and your machine. If you decide to click them all and turn them all on, then the software will go ahead and choose the one with the shortest rapid moves and present that to you as the tooling that you can preview. So because we want to go ahead and cut these in a way that we can pull one off when it's done cutting, then we're going to make sure that we merge them by part. So we can give it a name, we'll just call it Merge Tool Paths, and we'll merge those tool paths together. Now, we want to remember that the software is, is respecting the order that we have these tool paths in. So when it goes ahead and cuts the first one, it's actually gonna cut the pocket first, the detail next, and then the cutout, and then it's gonna move on to the next one. So let's just go ahead and preview our visible tool paths and see what we get. Now the software will try its best to go from left to right based on start points and other things that are going on in our vector lines. 
So be sure that you watch your toolpath and understand where it's going to go next. We'll need to reset that first, and then we can go ahead and preview those visible toolpaths. As you saw, it did respect the order of the toolpaths. It did all the pockets first, then the details, and then the cutout. And that way we could actually go ahead and, like I mentioned, pop this one off, and we can go ahead and finish that while we wait for the next one to get done. Now, to look at our Merge Toolpath options, we just need to double-click on our Merge Toolpaths again, and we have all of our settings that we've chosen a second ago. So let's say we didn't want it to bother to preserve that order that we have. We can uncheck the Merge by Part, and we can merge those again. And we'll be given this warning that says, the resulting Merge Toolpaths will not necessarily preserve the current toolpath order or the cutting order within an existing toolpath. This is important to know because you're going to need to be sure that everything gets cut in a safe and appropriate manner for the tools that you're using and the material that you have, and then make any adjustments accordingly. So let's click OK. Let's reset our preview, and let's go ahead and preview what we have now. Now it may be important to use this technique depending on your manufacturing process that you have. So it's always great to experiment with this and see if you can come up with the most efficient way of cutting your parts. So let's just go ahead and close this down now. And if for some reason you needed to make a change to one of these toolpaths that are within this merge toolpath, that's really easy as well. You can just double click on it. So let's just say our pocket needed to be a little less deep. We can change that to be a quarter inch deep. We can recalculate that toolpath and it will automatically fix it inside of our merge toolpath. We can reset our preview and then we can preview that toolpath again. Let's turn that up. And you'll see that in the end, our pocket isn't quite as deep, which means our details are going to be a little bit deeper. But that was pretty easy to change. Now, if for some reason you decided that you didn't want these toolpaths to be merged anymore, you can ungroup them. You can unmerge them if you would like, simply by selecting the merge toolpath at the top. Right click on that, say delete, delete this. Then you'll be asked whether or not you'd like to delete the sub toolpaths. We want to keep those. And you'll see that now our merge toolpath is gone and we have our three toolpaths back again. Now, hopefully, you can understand the difference between the array copy toolpath and the merge toolpath options, and you can choose which one is best for the job that you're currently doing. I hope you found that useful, and for now, that concludes this demonstration.